Wow, for being a social protector, I'm like nervous. Because I don't know, because I haven't done this before. And because this wig is hot. And because I'm filming in a weird place and I hope that Jill's not mad. I'm sorry. I thought it was fashion forward. A mirror, a crochet, this. Ugh. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Jill says that you guys are nice, so. Yeah, my name is Veronica. Um, my age is 21. I started in the system at age 20 um, and I have aged up a little bit uh, with like therapy and integration. Um, not like fusion but integration. There's a difference. I'm sure someone else has explained that before. Like integration is like knowing that your parts are even there and like getting them closer together and like finding things in common and stuff and then fusion is when you actually like like Steven Universe like become one. This thing is asking me my height. What are you talking about? What do you mean? That is such a stupid thing to have in here. Sorry, being rude right off the bat. What do you mean my height? I'm in your brain. Yeah, no offense, I don't know. Like, I guess we have internal projections of like how we see them in our like internal imagery or whatever. Uh, but like, I don't know, I don't have a number for you. This isn't math, don't ask me numbers, stop. What is my role in the system? Oh, I already said that. So I'm sexual protector um, and also social protector. I love big group situations. I love parties. I love social situations. Um, and it honestly, like, I thrive off of it and I get recharged from it. So COVID and quarantine was brutal. But this summer has been amazing. Not that like COVID is over past tense, you know what I mean, but there has been a lot more opportunity to do things this summer and we've had something on like every single weekend. It has been fantastic. So I'm very, very pleased. I don't have to do a whole lot of like sexual protecting obviously because we are in a safe place with a safe person. Um, thank you and have been with this safe person for four years now. Yeah, I definitely um, had my hand in starting that relationship. Sorry. Not sorry, actually. You're welcome you're very welcome what is your role in the system wait no I just did that I'm also a bimbo I am also stupid sorry oh my god I skipped one okay I did I help did I mention that I'm dumb <laughs> and I'm not trying to be self-deprecating I'm not trying to be like anti-feminist but I like <laughs> it is the middle of the day I have not even had nary a glass of wine I can come out without alcohol but I much prefer if there's a little bit Oh, okay, my pronouns and gender identity. I'm a she they, she her. I don't know, I don't really care. Um, I, like, internally I identify as, like, what's down there. Like, who knows? But I for sure have big boobies. This is so, if you are my dad, <laughs> if you are, like, my teacher, maybe, um, skip this part. <laughs> But I don't know, I feel like I don't know anything about the struggles of being an intersex person and like it's not that clear. Like what I see in the inner world from my perspective, for Jill I think it's a lot clearer. She talks about like being Bella Swan in Breaking Dawn. For me it's kind of like everything looks like the like AI generated like Dali, it's called crayon now. That's cute. But yeah, no, things are not that clear to me. So if just, if anyone's gonna clock me and be like, I thought you said you were intersex, I decided to back down from that because I don't wanna take that label. I feel like it's just gonna get messy. So anyway, yeah, I've, I'm a very feminine person and I just, I just I'm, I'm, here to, I'm here to have a good time. This is a mess. I'm sorry. This is gonna be the absolute messiest meet the altar imaginable. Are you kidding me? Sorry, have fun editing this. Um, when about did you split? That one's important. Um, yeah, I split around the same time as Jerem, and it was from the same trauma. Um, obviously he split off to be more of a, like, 
intimidating as much as we can be at our what bodily like five foot one um the intimidating kind of thick skinned spiky um like rebellious part and i split to handle the sexual assault aspect so yeah it's it's it doesn't affect me emotionally which is crazy to say but as a part it does not affect me emotionally that i know that i exist um because we were raped um it's just a fact of the matter and i split off because we just simply needed someone that would enjoy it uh and take it uh because it was inescapable and happening multiple times over multiple months Jill is getting triggered because we're talking about our salt. Jill is getting triggered, but it is not my fault. Let's take a drink. So yeah, I've been around for a long time and I've helped with a lot of things. Um, like I said, not just like literally in the bed. Um, but like partying out at night, late night happenings. I definitely don't have a lot of the anxiety that Jill has. I'm a little bit more nervous for this just because I've never done it before. Um, but in a social situation and especially online, I really, really, really don't care um, about a lot of stuff that she cares about. And we didn't even realize that until we were in therapy. And yeah, our therapist was like, we can tag you as like a social media protector as well. And I was like, oh, f ah, slay. So I'm helpful in multiple ways. Thank you very, very much. Even if I can't um, read things in a list in order or do many other things. Um, do you remember much of your life before diagnosis slash system discovery? <sighs> Retroactively, retrospectively. Whichever word means, like, looking back, um, it is more clear. I'm not even gonna bother saying a bunch of this stuff because I know Jill would just cut it so fast. But, um, I, yeah, I've had some fun. I've had some fun and I've dabbled, let's say. And this is probably a funny enough story. Um, it's still, it's, it'll still embarrass her, but, like, I, I have to tell something about my life. Um, one thing that, uh, scared the shit out of Jill was probably, like, what, two years into their relationship with Stevie? And I guess Stevie's my partner as well, but, you know. System semantics. Stevie and our friend Maggie just casually mentioned how back before we moved to our current town, we were friends for like maybe three to four months we met and then moved like very quickly later anyway they randomly we were just reminiscing and they were like oh yeah and you used to like strip naked while we were hanging out i remember jill flipping her absolute shit. what i used to what <laughs> literally what are you talking about oops um yeah a small moment of of uh, amnesia at play that I didn't realize until two years later friends are like remember when you used to just like we'd all be hanging out in your room you would walk eight feet strip out of your clothes be in full lingerie with a garter and then ask Stevie to fix it <laughs> I knew what I wanted and I knew how to get it so yeah, mortifying, horrifying, um, but it worked. <laughs> what do you look like inside? Oh, we invested in this wig because we've like, we've worn wigs for years anyway, literally just for fashion. So it's not that much weirder or more different to like, just throw it on. Why not? It looks more normal than our normal hair. Like our normal hair is rainbow and like, literally a sphere so anyway um i don't look that much different than the body yeah i don't mind being in the body um i'm definitely i like i'm vain <laughs> i'm fully vain i fully think i'm beautiful i fully spent too much time looking at myself in tiktok filters before this i filmed the same tiktok like five times before i selected which one was the right one 
Okay, this one's fun. Um, nicknames for you from system mates or others outside the system. So, Jill calls me Ron, um, which is like cute. M calls me Ronnie, which is really cute. Um, what else? Stevie just goes, Veronica, open the, open the door, please, Veronica, open the door. <laughs> I feel like Jill just calls me, like, Miss Veronica most of the time, which, you know, apt title, fine. Interests, um, I like drag, like, a lot of others in the system. Um, it's handy having, like, system mates other parts in your head that like the same things because we can all just kind of get together um, or we can like watch the same thing even if like one of four people are out anyway um, yeah I was listening to a lot of Bald and Beautiful before this Jill really likes that podcast too um, my favorite drag queen is probably Alaska I just love clubbing I love going out and I'm so sorry I love alcohol I love drinking. All I want to do is go to the f club with my friends. I want to do heavy makeup. I want to do pre-drinks before. I want to go to the club and I want to not remember much. <laughs> I like makeup, obviously. I had a lot of fun doing this. I love fashion. I like filming TikToks. I'm trying to think things I did earlier today. Basically, if you read the back of like a brat doll or something and read her synopsis it's pretty much that it's like I love fashion makeup nails and shopping like I'm sorry there has to be some parts with little substance well I have substance do you want to feel it sorry hobbies I just did that oops favorite music I love Lady Gaga I love Lady Gaga um, I really love, what's on my playlist? Dochi is wonderful. Ash Nico is amazing. Demi Lovato, Demi Lovato's album Tell Me You Love Me is, yeah, a, I spent a lot of days doing a lot of to that album. <laughs> I feel like 2018 was kind of my year. <laughs> Clothing style, um, internally, like, in our literal brain, we do like nightly check-ins. But yeah, like in in our world, um, I'm usually literally wearing a lavender bralette and lavender like yoga pants, like lavender joggers. I don't know why, and my hair is this color like perfectly. Jill did an amazing time um, scouting this wig out. Um, it's like a very specific coral blonde like not like electric ginger like what is this i don't know but it's perfect but if we're going out out like in the external world with my real uh, external friends i usually wear some sort of little pink little baby this what is this is not baby though what is this a sweetheart neckline a little pink number um, lavender is my favorite color to wear, but I don't have enough of it. Um, and pink usually goes with Jill's hair. I don't usually wear this when we're going out. Um, I should more. I should more. Literally had to fight Jill on um, wearing a shirt or not. This is a turtleneck. Are you kidding me? I'm being, I'm being attacked. I approve with the outfit, okay? It is more for that. I, the other thing I was gonna wear is literally just a lavender lace bra, and she was like, we have to put a shirt on, so. Okay, you win, this time. But I've done TikToks in that bralette, so just saying. Ooh, favorite social media accounts and creators. Okay, this is annoying, but like, obviously Chrissy Schlebecka. Um, she has just become like the new goddess of the world, so she's probably my number one right now. I like, don't remember anyone. I feel like I'm just gonna have to put them up here because I don't remember what like names are. I don't remember what it, it'll be like pink moon baby xyx like I'm so sorry my brain can't hold this much information. And I'm not making fun of your usernames they are everything my username is pixie Locks. like we are the same. TikTok is definitely my favorite platform because I'm annoying! Um and also I've been using Twitter a little bit recently it's been delightful being out today um we had like half of an idea to film this today and when we woke up I was just like roaring to go. Also follow me on Twitter is where that was going also. <laughs> oh my god I didn't do a Q&A. I'm a bad per- oh I should do it right now. OMG. 
I forgot to ask for Q&A questions. Okay, well, I guess I'll go take a small break. Hi, I fully filmed a TikTok and I'm back! I'll just do a couple and then I'll go because this book is hurting my head and I don't like being in pain. Honey Calm System asks, uh, OMG, yay. So my question is, how much would you say your uh, style and own personal flair slash personality differs from the others? Um, also, could you share some style info? Oh, ew, cute. Um, not ew, like E-W. Ooh, like O-O-O-H. Um, okay, so the thing with DID, I, I've been wanting to say this too, is that I really don't think Jill and I are that different. I really, really, really don't. Um, we have a lot of similar mannerisms. Um, we have a lot of honestly like similar vocal patterns um, and a lot of the time I'll be co-con um, unless we're really partying then you might get like a hundred percent Miss Veronica right now I'm like a good honestly like 95 like pretty much there's no one else oh my god I can't hear anyone else ah oh my god I love oh wait I'm alone hi okay yeah no um I was gonna say yeah DID it it, it 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 was multiple personality disorder it's not multiple voice disorder it's not like multiple outfit disorder like there are DID systems where everyone talks the same um where maybe everyone identifies with the gender assigned at birth um so I just want to say like I think Jill and I have a lot of similarities and I think that's something that doesn't make me less of a part. Um, it really just means that uh, we've existed in the same brain and body since we were physically, what, 12, 13? And also, this is a point that we've wanted to get out for honestly a long time. I've wanted to say the sentence because it it's a good, smart sentence. In your group of friends, or in your classroom, or in your work group, or whatever, do you not find that you guys pick up on each other's, like, mannerisms a little bit? Because our friend group absolutely does. Um, we will, like, start, like, like, we'll start doing the same, like, facial expressions and little catchphrases. And, like, we'll start laughing the same way just because we hang out with them, like, multiple times a week. So I think that, like, if six friends can kind of like act like subconsciously morph certain mannerisms from their literal friends that are separate people outside of their body. I don't think we should be like shitting on parts and DID systems for sometimes sharing certain ways of saying sentences. Anyway, I don't know how to say this nicely to me. <laughs> To my own self, um, I'm a lot more carefree, um, she would probably say care less, but I just don't, I don't care about a lot of the things that bother Jill, I don't have a lot of the same anxieties, um, I still have some of, like, the anxiety, we have GAD, I, oh, one big difference between us is that I love gossip, <laughs> I love gossip, I love drama. I love talking about what the f is going up. I love, I just love, I love a chat. I love a gossip. And Jill is like, it's not nice to speculate and it's not nice. And every, she, she was like, every time that I see a video that's mean, I click do not recommend because I don't want mean people. Bitch, I want to see it. I want to know. I will click it. I will watch it. I'm sorry. And I will definitely go a good, like, 35% harder than her at a party. Um, and you can interpret that as whatever you want. So maybe she would want me to rein that in sometimes. But, like, I'm literally here to have a good time. Literally. Oh, this is a good one. Um, and people might have some questions about this. Uh, whimsy queen. This is a nice question about this, but people might have sneaky questions about it in the comments. Um, I know you identify with this word, so I'm curious as to your perspective on it. Um, what does being a bimbo mean to you? All the love to you and the others. That's from whimsy queen. This is a great question. Uh, bimbo is definitely a word that we grew up even hearing used, um, derogatorily. Um, we actually... But I think the first time we actually heard someone in real life call someone else a bimbo meanly, 
it was the person that um, abused us, um, sexually abused us and caused Jared and I to form. And she was not talking about me, she was talking about um, one of her friends, which was like really awful and mean. Um, and it was literally because she had sex with someone. Anyway, so I definitely, and also I've heard like probably older people in my life, you know, just like commenting on people on TV being like, oh, she's just a bimbo, whatever. Oh yeah, so I remember once, um, some was an adult in my life, I won't out them, <laughs> but said that some of the YouTubers that were watching, they're like, she's such a bimbo, why do you watch her? And I think it's really f***ed up that we, at the same time, we like force women, and let me, let me say women with an asterisk, we force a lot of people, um, and I felt this pressure very much so, to be sexualized way before I was ready, fully against my will, which I made very, very verbally clear. I was absolutely forced to be like a fuckable, like plaything, literal words, um, when I was like just getting out of elementary school. Um, and it's absolutely an act of reclamation, like a hundred percent. Like I mentioned, I'm aware of the fact that I exist um to be someone who doesn't say no this is gonna need a trigger warning i really exist to be someone who will not have any problems with what's being done to me and will actually enjoy it um because sometimes there is no escape um and there is you've already pleaded no and it's happening and you just have to go somewhere else in your head Oh, and this is Jill. <laughs> honk honk, can I be in my body again? Is there more coffee? Oh, okay, we're getting switchy, so I'm gonna probably do one more and cap it off. But, um, yeah, term of reclamation, absolutely. And, and we, we saw it being used. Uh, around on social media first by other people um, like bimbo revolution bimbo reclamation on on TikTok and stuff so it just really really resonated with us and with like Veronica as a part oh my god it's so Jill now oh no did I lose her did I lose her because we started talking too deeply about trauma I think we did no I think we're Kokon okay we're Kokon okay we're Kokon Okay, we're Kokon. <laughs> ooh, ooh, let's do one more. Okay, wait, this is a fun one. This is a fun one. This is a fun one. Trigger me out with a good question. What are your favorite songs to dance to? Asks Lavender Wonder. Let me get you my playlist. Off of the top of my head, um, Dancing in Circles is one of the most, like, plural. I know the song is, it's, it's about masturbation. It's about masturbation. It's fully, it's about having fun with yourself. But the lyrics, if you are plural, it's, you, you gotta, you gotta swirl around your kitchen to, in some lingerie, to dancing in circles. Do yourselves a favor. What else is on here? Lady Gaga, Have You Met a Lover? Metric Hustle Rose. Jill loves that album and there's some really like horny ass songs on it. Um, Ash Nico, Slumber Party, obviously, are you kidding me? I like that they asked for consent in that song. Lady Gaga GY um, was my anthem for way too long. Oh, Alaska Thunder, also, I listen to her music quite a bit. That is definitely something that Jill does not like. That is a specifically me thing. Jill likes Alaska, does not like her music. She'll like apologize when it comes on in the car and I'm like, what are you doing? Don't be sorry. You're so mean. Anyway, okay. Thank you guys for this. I have to run. I really have to go. I've been around for a long time. You've probably seen little hints of me. Like I said, Jill and I are not that different. Um, and we're co-conscious a lot because I'm a social protector and a sexual protector. Oh. Um, one video that was for sure me. Oh, things that we've seen in retrospect. Um... Valentine's Day Heartbreaker Lookbook. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. You don't even want to know who f***ing broke my heart, bitch. You don't even want to know. Anyway, thank you. This has been fun. I'll see you guys later. Oh, will I? Maybe. Okay, bye.